All right, welcome to today's lecture. So this is lecture 14. We are still under functions, but to be specific today, we're looking at linear functions. And under linear functions, we'll look at the equation of a straight line, we'll look at parallel lines and uh, perpendicular, perpendicular lines. So once we're just done with these sub, uh, these three subtopics, then we are done with, um, then we are done with, uh, um, linear function. So today's topic is quite a short topic, but to do some a little uh, some solving. Yeah. So let's quickly begin. All right. So what you need to understand is that a linear function is simply just a function that takes this form. So any function that that, that takes um, a form of uh, y is equal to mx plus c is called a linear function. So in this function, um, m is called the gradient. So m is the gradient it can either be negative or positive. And then c is called the y-intercept. So this one was saying it's uh, the gradient and then this one is the y-intercept. So what we mean by the y-intercept, it means it's, um, what we mean is that is here, where is C? When, when for instance, you have a, an x y plane like that, and then you have maybe this line is passing somewhere there. Maybe let's say this is the line passing there. So uh, the gradient, which is the slope of this line, is represented by M. And then this C here is simply just a point at which the line cuts the y-axis. So at this point, that is where we have C. So if you have a positive C, it means that the curve is passing somewhere like this. So meaning the C is somewhere like that, is somewhere there. Or it can be passing like this, then the C is there. Yeah, so if you have a negative, then you expect your C to be under the negatives. So C is simply just a point at which um, the line cuts the y-axis. All right, so we have these, uh, these are some of the examples of linear functions. So in this uh, function, in this function, three is, um, is the gradient and then six is the y-intercept. And then once you introduce y, it becomes an equation. So a function, when you call something a function, it means that yeah, what, what is this side on the left is f of x. Uh, so the function of x is equal to three, three x plus six. Then we're saying this six is the y-intercept and then three here is a gradient. So in case they ask you to determine the gradient here, you just say m is equal to three. And uh, they ask you also to find the y-intercept, you just say c is equal to, or the y-intercept is equal to six. Yeah, so this is exactly what you are supposed to do. So this is an example of um, the graphs of this line. So you have, uh, when you look at this line here, this one has a positive gradient. So when a line has a positive gradient, you expect it to come out like this. When it has a negative gradient, you expect the slope to be like that. And then when, uh, you only have the y-intercept. So this one is uh, y is equal to m x plus c, and your c is just at that point. And then this one, this line, well, let me be pointing this. This one is y is equal to m x plus c. So the gradient for this one is positive. And then this one, the gradient is negative. So we expect it to be negative m x, plus C. And then when you look at this one here, this one, this line down here. So this one has no gradient. In short, the gradient is equal to zero. So for this line, you expect it uh, to have a gradient of zero. Hence, you are going to have uh, something like this. Y is equal to, when we put zero at this M there, means that you're just going to remain with C. So if they ask you to sketch the graph of y is equal to uh, three. This one is just, you just do this, one, two, three. 
Then at this point, that is why you draw your line. So this is y is equal to three because it has no gradient. That's why it's a straight line. All right. So okay. So I've explained this. M is called the slope or the gradient. And then uh, C is called the y-intercept. The straight line uh, passes uh, the y-axis at point zero comma C. Okay. So there is this question. There are these questions there. Yeah? They're saying graph the solution of the following equations. So how do you do this? Simple. We get this one first. So we have um, 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. So you take this one to the other side of the equal sign, you have 2x is equal to negative 1. So you have 2x is equal to negative 1 when you divide by 2, 2, you're getting your x to be equal to negative 1 over 2. So this is uh, the equation that we are going to sketch. So how do we sketch that? They are saying we graph the solution of these equations. So how do we... Uh, put them on the graph. So we have the x, y plane like that. Then we have, this is the x axis. This is the y axis. Okay, this is the y axis. So in line x is equal to negative one over um, two, simply just this side. You just put negative one over two there. So this is the line. Yeah. So it's also just a straight line, there's no gradient. Okay, so we can also sketch this one. Y minus four is equal to two. So saying Y minus four is equal to two. So uh, Y is equal to two plus four. So the value of Y will become six. So here we just say the value of Y is six. So I'm going to just count uh, six, uh, and uh, six uh, steps going to the positive y. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we draw this one. So this, this line is y is equal to, y is equal to six. And then this one is x is equal to negative half. So, Let's also sketch this one. For well, this one, I'll erase everything. So we have x plus y plus one is equal to zero. So you take this one to the other side of the equal sign, you have x plus y is equal to one. So what we are going to do is uh, we make one as a substitute value, and then we make the table of values. So we're going to make one as a substitute uh, uh, Okay. Not negative, oh, not. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Negative yeah. one. All right, I've seen. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, um, when you check this, uh, we, we can make one as a subject of the formula. So, we're going to say y is equal to, we have negative one. Then, when x goes this side, we're going to have negative x there. So, I'm going to make the table of values. I'll just pick any three numbers. Uh, yeah, any three natural numbers. So I'm going to have my X there, my Y there. So I'll do this. So if my X is negative one, if X is negative one, the value of Y will be, so I'm, I'm going to say when X is negative Y, Y is equal to, so I have negative one minus, I put negative one there. So this would be y is equal to negative one. Uh, negative times negative is positive, and then plus one. So the value of y becomes zero. So when x is negative y, the value of y is zero. Then when x is zero, when I put a zero as this x here, I'll just remain with y is equal to negative one. So this would be negative one minus zero, which is just the same as y is equal to negative one. So when x is, um, yeah, so when x is zero, uh, y is negative one. And then we also try when x is one. So when x is one, we're just going to say y is equal to negative one 
minus, we put one there. So y is equal to negative one minus one. So the value of y will be two, negative two. So the value of y is going to be negative two. So we we'll put negative two then. So we can do the sketching. So we have, this is the x-axis, and then this is the y-axis. So we have negative one comma zero, which is just here. I will approximate it to be here, negative one comma zero. So it will be there. And then we also have zero comma negative one, zero comma negative one, zero comma negative one. So I'll also put it there. So it's somewhere there. Then one, so my one will be somewhere there, comma, negative two. So my negative two approximated to be somewhere there. So I have a point there, negative, I mean one comma negative two. So when you look at this, this is a straight line, which is coming like this. So this is the equation y is equal to negative one minus x. So this is true because when you look at the gradient, which is the coefficient of x, we said the, the linear equation is in the format m, I mean, y is equal to mx plus c. So the coefficient of x is always the gradient. So when you look at the coefficient of x here, the coefficient of x is negative one. So this tells us to say the gradient of this line is negative one. And that's true because a negative gradient is always like this. Okay, so I don't know if you have any questions on how to uh, find the gradient and uh, sketching linear equations before we proceed, because we also have uh, other examples. So can you kindly uh, go through it uh, real quick again? Uh, I'd missed out some points. Thank you. Okay. So sketching this one, the last one. You mean the last one, this one? Yes. Okay. Yes, the last one, the last question. All right, so this one, you just make one of these, either X or Y, the subject of the formula. So when you make X the subject or Y the subject, when you say Y is equal to, we make Y the subject, we're going to have this one will go this side and the X will also go that side. So we'll have negative X and negative one. So it can either be negative one, negative X is still the same when you take them to the other side of the equal sign. So from there, you now have to draw the table of values. So you put your X there, you put your Y there. So you just get any three numbers, any any three numbers, and put them, try them in this uh, equation. So myself, I like getting negative one, zero, and one, because at least these numbers will not give me a problem when it comes to do making doing calculations. So when I get negative one, when I get negative one and replace it while there's X there, I'm going to have, uh, y is equal to negative, I'll put negative one on this x, then minus one. So negative one, negative times negative one there, I'll be getting uh, positive one and then minus one there, which gives me a zero. So here when x is negative one, I'm getting a zero. And then when x is zero, when I put zero on this x there, I'm going to have y is equal to, while this x, I'm going to put zero there. So this would be negative, I'll replace a zero there, then minus one. So the value of y will be equal to negative one. This is zero minus one, which is negative one. So I'll put negative one there. So when I replace one, one while there's uh, x there, I'm going to have uh, y is equal to negative, uh, while there's x, I put one, then minus one there. So the value of y will simply just be uh, negative one minus one, which gives me negative two. So when x is one, y is negative two. So when sketching, when sketching, you do this, and then you have, this is your y, this is your x. And then you have your y there. So this is the origin. So we start with negative one comma zero. So negative one comma zero, my negative one is there. Comma zero, we, we are not moving any points in the negative, I mean, in the y axis. So we have the, the negative, negative one comma zero is, is just at the same point there. Then we can also uh, put zero comma negative one. So zero comma negative one can be somewhere there. 
So zero comma negative one. And then we also put one comma negative two. So one, I'll put my one there. And then negative two, I'll put it there. So this is a point uh, one comma negative two. So we can draw this line. So this line will be like this. You just join the, the three points. Yeah, so you can see that it's a straight line. Yeah, it's a straight line. So that's why we are, we are calling these linear equations. These, they, ju they just produce straight lines when you, when you sketch them. They are always straight lines. Yeah, so this is exactly how you sketch. So I was saying, when you look at the gradient, which is the coefficient of X is, uh, when you look at the gradient here, which is just the coefficient of X, you discover that it's a negative one. So negative one, this is uh, uh, proving to us that the, the, what I've done is correct because the gradient of this line is negative. The gradient of a negative, uh, I mean, the gradient, when the gradient is negative, the line comes out like this. When the gradient is positive, the line goes like that. All right, so let's proceed. Excuse me, sir. Okay. Yes, when putting the numbers on the, what's this, the solution table, okay. do you have to pick any numbers or you have to go back to the equation to guide you? You can pick any numbers. Any numbers provided, because you can't tell me that you, on this table, if I want, I can pick 100, yes. But if I pick 100, I put it there. I'll have negative 101 as the answer. So when I have negative 101, even my approximation should come and be, should at least, okay, it should just make sense in short. That's the reason why I like using negative one, zero, and one, because these, they are very close numbers. They are close. At least you get three close numbers, not two, never get two. Uh, uh, sometimes two numbers might mislead you, at least uh, at least three numbers, yeah. You can get four, five numbers, as long as they are, they, they are, they are just okay, you're doing correct thing, you still get the same answer. But the minimum should be three numbers, any three numbers, you still have a straight line. No, All right, okay. so we have this other example. Find the equation of the straight line given uh, P, is it P this one and Q that. So finding the equation of a straight line, one thing that you, one thing which you need to understand, which you need to understand is that the equation, you just have to master this one. The equation is given by Y is equal to uh, M X uh, plus C. This is the equation that we know of a straight line. But when finding this equation, what you do is, let me do this. The equation of a straight line, when you've been given two points, you have to uh, use this equation, y minus y1 is equal to m, open brackets, x minus x1. So this is the formula that you use to find the equation of a straight line. Yeah, so this is the equation that you use to find the, the, what's this, the equation of a straight line. So where do I get my y1 and my x1? You can get any of these two points, but the only part that you need to put in mind, which you don't need, which you 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 have to solve uh, step by step, is the gradient. So this is the equation. Let me just write it properly here. So this is the equation of a straight line, y minus uh, y1, y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. So this is a very important equation. You have to master it. And then to find m, which is the gradient. So the gradient is just given by y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So never make a mistake and say y2 minus y1. And then down here, you say x1 minus x2. It, it makes everything wrong. So what you do is if you start with, um, if you start with y1, you say y1 minus y2. It means that even down here, you have to start with x1 minus x2, x2. That's how it is. Once you just make the arrangement uh, different from what I've given you here, you, fi you find everything to be wrong. You find the wrong answer in short. So if you, have st if you have started with y1 on top, even the denominator should be x1. You have to start with x1 even on the denominator. Yeah, so, this is the equation we're going to use. But if, before we use this equation, 
we need to uh, get the gradient. So the gradient, we know to say the gradient is given by y1 minus y2. But I like, I like using y2 minus y1. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then we write our equation, uh, um, uh, our points here. So we have these two points, which is, uh, we have P, which is uh, two comma one. We also have Q, which is uh, three comma four. So when you look at these two points, you have P and Q. So um, we are going to get this one as X1, Y1, then this one X2, Y2. So to find the gradient, we're going to say M is equal to, we replace these numbers. So my Y2 is, Y2 there is four, minus my Y1 is one over, X2 is three, minus X1, which is two. So when you simplify this, you get four minus uh, one this is three, three minus two, one. So the answer here is only three. So the gradient is simply just three. So now we use this equation. So when using this equation, you just have to pick one of these two points. You can either pick P or you pick Q. As long as they're in the same line, they'll give you the same answer. If you, if you want, you can pick Q. If you want, you can pick P. As long as you are ju you've just done the right thing, you find the same answer. So let me pick P. So if I pick P, I'll say this is my X1, this is my Y1. So using the equation, we have uh, Y minus, using this equation here, Y1 will be one is equal to, then M is simply just three open brackets, and then X minus, X1 is two. So I'm going to say Y, uh, minus one is equal to three times X, I'm getting three X. And then three times negative two, I'm getting negative six. So I'll take this negative one to the other side of the equal sign so that I, I remain with Y is equal to. So I'm going to remain with Y is equal to three X minus six and then plus one. So the equation will therefore be equal to uh, the equation will therefore be equal to uh, y is equal to three x, then negative six plus one, this will give us negative five. So this is the equation of the straight line which I wanted. Yeah, so this is how you do, uh, this is how you find the equation. So the first thing that you need to do is to find the gradient. If you've been given two points, the first thing that you need to do is to find the gradient. After finding the gradient, you pick any point, I mean, any point between the two points, and then you find the, the, what is the equation using this equation. Even if you pick three comma four, the answer that you are going to find here will still be the same. If you put, um, if you put three where there is uh, X1, and then you put four where there is Y1, and then you do the simplifying, you find that the same, you, you, you still find the same answer. And let's quickly do it so that at least whenever you are solving, you shouldn't be having doubts. So if I take Q as the point, I take Q as my point. So I'm going to say Y minus, uh, if, I mean, Q is three comma four. So I'm taking this one as X1, this one as Y1. So this will be Y is equal to, oh, sorry, Y minus Y1 will be four is equal to my M, I've found my gradient to be three. So open brackets then X minus X1 is uh, three. So this would be Y minus four is equal to three times X, three X, three times three there, the answer is uh, nine. Yeah, so nine there, so this negative four cross the equal sign. So I'm going to have Y is equal to three uh, X minus nine, and then negative four and it crosses the equal sign becomes positive uh, four. So the value of y becomes three x minus negative nine plus four five is the answer. So it doesn't matter whichever point you pick, as long as those two points lie on the same line, they'll give you the same equation.
So you can see that the equations that we found are just, are just the same. So let's move on to this one. So this one we've been given the gradient, which is the slope to be negative one over two and uh, we've been given one point. So this one is straightforward. So just say y minus y1 is equal to the gradient times x minus x1. So the gradient there that we've been given is a uh, uh, negative half. And then the point that we've been given is two comma negative three. So we'll check this one as x1, this one as y1. So we say y minus our y1 is negative three is equal to gradient is negative half open brackets x minus our x1 is two. So we say y negative times negative three there to be positive three is equal to we have negative half times x, negative half x, negative half times negative two, get positive uh, one. So we take this uh, positive three to the other side of the equal sign. So we have x is equal to negative half uh, x uh, plus one minus three. So the equation will therefore be equal to negative half x, then one minus three, the answer is negative two. So if you want, you can multiply throughout the whole equation by you multiply it by two. So if you multiply the whole equation by two to get rid of this uh, denominator two. So this one will become two y. We say y times two, you get two y. And then a negative half x times two, you get negative x. And then negative two times two, you get um, negative two times two, you get uh, negative four. And then if you want to make this uh, this one uh, this one uh, positive, you can also take it to the other side of the cosine so that you have x uh, plus 2y is equal to negative 4. So it doesn't matter where you leave your question. If you want, I mean, where you leave your answer. If you want, you can just you can leave it just here. So if you want, you can just leave it here. y is equal to negative half x minus 2. They'll give you full marks. If you want, you can leave it here. While there's 2y is equal to negative x minus four, they'll give you full marks. If you want, you can leave it here, x plus two y is equal to negative four, they'll give you full marks. Yeah, so let us quickly move on. Do we have any questions here? So I just had the equation on the previous slide. The previous slide on this one? Yes. Yes, maybe just briefly on question number two. This one? Just briefly, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So this one is straightforward. You have y minus four is equal to two. So you just make y the subject of the formula. When you make y the subject of the formula, you're going to have two plus four. So y is equal to six. So this is what you have, y is equal to six. So in sketching, you have zero there. Then this is the x-axis, then we have the y-axis. So we have y is equal to six. So y, we move six steps going towards the positive um, y-axis, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you just draw a straight line. So this is uh, the equation y is equal to six. Yeah, so that's how you do the sketching. Okay, thank you so much, sir. All right. Okay. Okay, so let's look at parallel lines. So on parallel lines, the, the, the most important thing that you just need to understand is that for two lines to be said to be parallel, so I'm going to take uh, two things at once. I'm going to take parallel and perpendicular lines. I'll explain them at once. So. Uh, for two lines to be said to be parallel, if we say that two lines are parallel, if line one is uh, parallel to uh, line two, if line one is parallel to line two, the gradients of these lines, like gradient of line one should be equal to gradient of line two. That's the way it is. This is the only thing you need to know about the parallel lines. So if we say this line is parallel to this line, it means that the gradient of this line is exactly the same as the gradient of this one. So you can have parallel lines which are like this, you can have parallel lines which are like that. As long as their gradients are the same, then they are all parallel. 
I mean, they are parallel. That's how it is. Well, if we say three lines are parallel, it means that the gradient of those three lines is the same. So we have this uh, question here. Find the equations of uh, parallel lines, one passing through negative one comma two and the other, uh, and the other uh, three comma two with the slope negative one. So this one is straightforward. We have y, y minus y1 as the equation that we use to find the, the equations of uh, lines. So we have y minus y1 is equal to mx minus x1. So y, we get first this point, we get this one is x1 and then we have y1. So how do you do this one? This one is straightforward. So we say y minus y1, uh, y1 is um, two. Then we say this is equal to the gradient we've been given is negative one. So we say negative one open brackets x minus negative one there. So uh, my x one there is negative one. And yeah, so we can change the types of brackets there. Okay, so we have y minus um, two is equal to negative one times x. This will give me negative x then negative times negative one, positive one. Uh, positive one, uh, okay, so in brackets there we have positive one. Let me first do this, I have positive one there. So I'm going to have y minus two is equal to negative x, then minus negative x minus one. So we take this negative two to the other side of the equal sign. We have y is equal to negative x um, minus one, my, and then plus two. So y is equal to uh, negative x, negative one plus two, the answer is positive one. So this is the first equation. So let us also find the second equation. They are saying the, the equation, the two equations are parallel. So the second one will get these points, x1 and y1. They are saying the gradient is also negative one. So y minus y1 is equal to uh, m, x minus x1. So y minus y1, y1 will be three. So y1 is three is equal to neg negative one as our gradient. Then x minus, x1 is, um, oh, y1 is four, sorry. So y1 is four and then x1 is uh, three. So y minus four is equal to negative one times x, negative, uh, negative x. Negative one times negative three, positive three. So we have y. So I have y is equal to negative x plus three. When this negative four crosses the equal sign, we're going to have plus four. So y is equal to negative x, then plus seven. This is the other equation. So when you look at the gradients, which which we said the gradient of uh, any equation, which is a linear equation, is just the coefficient of x. So when you look at this one, the coefficient of x is negative one. Even there, the coefficient of x is negative one. So this shows that these two lines are parallel. Yeah, so these two lines are parallel because they have the same gradient. All right, do we have any questions before we proceed? Okay, so this is just the same as finding the equation of a straight line. So when we talk about perpendicular lines, so we talked about there's a question? Okay, we talked about parallel lines. Parallel lines are like this. They have the same gradient. Here we said M1 is equal to M2 for parallel lines. We said M1 is equal to M2. But when you talk about perpendicular lines, so a perpendicular line is simply just a line that meets the other line at 90 degrees. When you say these two lines are perpendicular, it means that they meet each other at 90 degrees. So we have this line and we have this other line. So for these, for these two lines, we have also M1 and M2. So for these two lines, um, let me draw it this way. So we have this line, we, have, we also have another line like that. This angle here in between should be a 90 degrees angle. So we have um, line one and line two. So here we have the gradient two and the gradient one. So for two, pen, two perpendicular lines, 
the gradient one times the gradient two should give you negative one. This is the only formula that you use on perpendicular lines. And then the other formula that you use to find the line, just do the same, y minus y1 is equal to m, and then x minus x1. That's so. This is what you do. This is how we do with like, uh, perpendicular lines. Okay, let's see if there's an example. There is an example here. Find the equation of a straight line perpendicular to the uh, perpendicular to the line, this one, passing through the point, this one, uh, passing through the point 2,4, uh, uh, B, which is the origin, uh, which is 0,0. 0. Hello? Okay. So I was saying, uh, for two perpendicular lines, the first gradient, which is M1, when you multiply it with M2, the answer should be negative one. So if we check the gradient of this line, the gradient of this line is just the coefficient of X there, which is just negative two. So we have negative two there as the gradient. So this one will be our M1. So in short, our M1 is equal to negative two. So we put negative two there, we say times M2 is equal to negative one. Yeah, we say this is equal to negative one. So to find M2, we're going to divide by negative one on both sides, uh, negative two on both sides. So the second gradient is simply just one over two. So we use this same gradient to find the line which is perpendicular to this one. So how do we do that? Y minus Y1 is equal to M X minus X1. So we have Y minus Y1, you get this point here. So we have x1 and y1. So y1 is simply just four. We say this is equal to the gradient we get this one, which is m2, which is half. So we're going to say half, uh, open brackets. We have x minus, x1 is simply just two. So from there we say y um, minus four is equal to, yeah, so the link is about to cut. I'm going to send another link or you can join using this same link immediately it cuts. Okay, so we say y minus four is equal to one over two. Then we have x minus two. So 